Welcome. In this lecture video, we are going to start talking about the recursively squares estimator. Why is that interesting? So far, we have considered different variants of the least squares estimator, which is basically something like a batch estimator. Because you take your entire data batch, you process it at once, and we have received estimates of the parameters. So this is something like a offline kind of way, because we assume that the data set is completely there, can be completely processed, and that's it. However, in many real-world applications, especially those which are running on an embedded processor, for example, which are running in real time, we normally get a stream of data. And while we get the stream of data, we might already also want to work with the stream of data in order to get estimates of the parameters along the way. So that's the first motivation why to do it not in this batch-like fashion as we did it so far, but in a recursive fashion using the recursively squares estimator. Moreover, if our regressor matrix, so the matrix which basically saves our observables, is very large, so if we have a lot of data and a lot of observables, then also the according linear algebra operations, especially those matrix inverse, which we have seen along the way, might be numerically very costly. And in that sense, if we do this in a recursive fashion, we can somehow shift the mathematical numerical work from one large operation to many small operations, which might make it feasible for very large systems, which we are going to identify. Last but not least, that we will also see later on in this mini-series on the recursive least squares estimator, an example where some of the parameters w maybe change slowly over time. So sometimes we have the effects that some parameters may not be like really constant parameters, but they have something like a drift. For example, if you have a technical system and that technical system is subject to tier and wear, and some of the system parameters deteriorate slowly during the runtime of the system, we might be able to track that if our least squares estimator is working recursively, so in an online fashion, such that we can track this slowly varying parameter set. Of course, that would be like formally still not within the scope of the classical least squares linear fitting, but it would be like in a good approximation if this time dependency, this dynamic dependency of the parameters with respect to time is sufficiently small. Okay, so therefore, in this mini-series on the recursive least squares estimator, first we're going through the derivation, how we can basically transfer our batch ordinary uh, least squares estimator to the recursive least squares uh, fashion and then apply this in an example. But in this video, we will basically start with the derivation and for this, we will first look at the k teased step of our standard ordinary least squares problem, which was y of k. So our output vector is equal to z of k, our regressor matrix times w of k. In this nomenclature, I mean that this y of k is our entire output vector, z of k is our entire regressor matrix, which would be uh, increasing and would grow over time for multiple time steps, and w of k is the entire parameter vector at a certain time step. And for this time step, we can, of course, also calculate the least square solution, the standard batch solution, with a z transpose of k times z at time step k inverted times z transpose k times uh, y of k. Okay, so that would be assuming that we have already obtained k samples at the k time step, we can do the prediction and the identification process as usual. Then let's say we move one time step further. So k plus one. So we assume that in the next time step, in the k plus one time step, we basically get another data sample, 
And that basically means that y of k plus one is now one element larger, longer than our y of k is from the previous one. And this would be then of course z of k plus one. So one regressor line row more here than here times w of k plus one. And obviously our estimation of the parameter set at this time step is analogously w k plus one is identical to z transpose times k plus one times z at the next time step inverted times z transpose k plus one times y of k plus one, right? So just the same more or less from the previous time step. However, we are now going to compose or decompose y uh, of k plus one and z of k uh, of uh, one a little bit in that sense that y of k plus one is of course the same as y of k and y of k plus one. And what I mean with that is that this is basically our previous um, output variable with up to k samples. And this would be here the scalar, basically just the next output sample which we add to it, which we concatenate with it. On the contrary, or not on the contrary, but analogously, that of k plus one is identical to capital Z of k, and a small, so that's why I make this a little bit smaller, z of k plus one, so basically a vector, capital Z, small z. So this would be then here our uh, regressor matrix, R with n times q elements, and this would be just another regressor vector, so one times q, so basically just another row um, vector which we add up, which we concatenate with z, right? And if we consider this decomposition of y of k plus one and z of k plus one and add it here to our uh, estimation problem of w k plus one, then we can of course just insert these two here. And what we get from that is capital Z transpose of K and a small z, so our regressor vector at time step K plus one, so basically the new data sample which we have times, so this is basically the decomposition of this one and we decompose this uh, regressor matrix by capital Z of K, or maybe make it a little bit smaller to make clear that this is the regressor matrix, the big one. And we concatenate Z, a small Z, K plus one below it. So this is exactly this decomposition of this um, matrix and we want to invert that times basically this, so like this one, it becomes capital Z transpose at time step K and concatenate it with a small Z transpose the next time step, so our new regressor vector, and so 
little bit space problems, but I think it still fits. Uh, we multiply this from the right hand side with a capital Y of K and a small Y of K plus one. Okay, so basically just the decomposition of this output vector in this form. Perfect. What we can do now as a last step for this video is we can basically just do these uh, multiplications, so calculate it out. And what we get from this is then basically uh, capital Z transpose at time step k times capital Z at time step k. So this is the multiplication of these two ones. And plus small z transpose at k plus 1 times small z of k plus 1 and that's the inverse so that's basically the multiplication of these two right our new regressor vectors right this then also becomes a, a matrix of appropriate size that, that we can calculate this plus here times and now we basically just do this calculation here, this multiplication, and this becomes then uh, that transpose times y of k, or z transpose at k, of course, at that time step. Um, plus small z transpose times k plus 1 times y of k plus 1, close parenthesis. So to make that a little bit more clearer, what we have here, so these are our classical regressor matrices at time step k, so that becomes a k times Q matrix. These here are our regressor vectors, so that is a column vector 1 by Q. Um, oh, by the way, I see that I had an error here because this is of course not n time steps, but only k time steps uh, if we're at the k time point. This here is then also our regressor matrix as usual k times q. This is our output vector with k elements and this is again our regressor vector r1 times q and this is our output sample just a scalar if we still assume that we have just one output measurement at a time. Okay and we can also rewrite if we like um, yeah, I think we don't need to rewrite it at that point. We can also do this at the next time step. However, what we can already see here from this, that this y of k could be also rewritten using here our uh, approach, could be also rewritten as z of k times w k if we apply this prediction calculation here at that point we will make use of this in the next step. And by doing this, we basically end up this video at this point. And what we see from this intermediate result is basically that we have not found yet a recursive formulation of the ordinary least squares problem. However, we have already found a link between WK and wk plus 1, right? So the parameter at the next time step is already somehow linked to the parameter of the previous time step. However, this is not really recursive at that point because we still have to make like a cumbersome matrix invertation at this point and also we would need to go through the entire data because in 
the regressor matrices as shown here, we have basically stored the entire previous data, right? But in a recursive fashion, we, in the next video, what we're going to see is that we're going to get rid of this inversion of this matrix here because that would be mathematically cumbersome. And what we would also do is we are trying to not store unnecessary data from the previous time steps, but such that we only need to um, store the least amount of data which we need in order to make this calculation truly recursive. And how we do that, we will see in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you then.